Welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with Rob Russell, Vice President of Satellite Solutions at Vicor. Welcome, Robert. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. So Vicor has been innovating in power modules for many years, and a key market is satellite. Can you tell us what is the outlook for deployments in LEO and MEO satellites? Over the next 10 years or so, uh, they're looking at deploying you know, up to 100,000 satellites. I've heard numbers between 30 and 40,000, up to 100,000. And when you take into account there's currently about 5,000 out there right now. You can see it's a very uh, fast developing and high growth market. So what's influencing the sudden interest in this area? Well, there's a lot of drivers, but uh, primarily it's, it's bandwidth. So it's communications bandwidth. Um, the, the majority of these 100,000 satellites are going to be communication satellites. Think people like SpaceX, Kuiper, OneWeb. They are all vying for uh, you know, uh, slots to get their satellites up there. Um, because the, the bandwidth growth in general is going to be massive and it always, it's always growing, right? Everybody needs more, yeah. more bandwidth. Um, you have things like Internet of Things, you have uh, streaming services, shift to cloud-based computing, AI. So there's, all these things are, are conspiring to generate massive bandwidth requirements and, and satellites are, are slated to take a big portion of that. In addition to that, you have um, you know, something like half the world doesn't have access to high-speed bandwidth. So you have three billion people that, that can't get it from terrestrial uh, sources. And that's another part of the market. So that's gonna fuel some of the growth too. So something like a third of those three billion people really uh, are looking for this type of, uh, of access. And it's, it's key to not only growth of the satellite market, but for those folks, it's key for them to, to grow as, as countries and, and areas of the world. It's, it's, in this day and age, it will hold you back if you don't have high speed access. Right. So what is so important about the power system design for LEO and MEO satellites? So if you take a step back, uh, in general for the design, um, if you're deploying hundreds or thousands of satellites, you are now looking at you know, orders of magnitude over what, what's been done before. So you have to really change, um, not only the power system, but the overall system. You have significant challenges with cost. So the cost of the satellites are coming down an order of magnitude at least over legacy type satellites. Uh, you have the bandwidth requirements. So in addition to driving down the cost through lower launch costs, smaller satellites, less expensive components, you really need to increase that bandwidth. Because if you're, you know, if you're SpaceX and Kuiper vying to get as many satellites as you can up in the, up, you know, up into orbit, um, the governments are restricting it. So they're, they're kind of doling it out. So you want each satellite to maximize the amount of bandwidth that can be created. So that sort of dynamic really leads customers, uh, developers of satellites to create the most technologically advanced satellite they can within those cost constraints. And that's, uh, that, that's a big driver for, for everything that they do. So what are the key design characteristics for a power delivery network for LEO and MEO satellites? What we're focusing on right now is driving the communication chips. So the, the processors, the FPGAs, the ASICs. Developers are getting the most powerful versions of those they can to, to uh, deploy into these satellites. And to power, power them up requires some advanced power conversions. Historically, where they, they would need maybe 5 or 10 amps for these sort of sub-1 volt applications, which is typical for uh, FPGA core voltage, let's say, now they need 100 amps or 150 amps. And it's a whole different, different ballgame. At the same time, they're trying to shrink everything, right? So the previous designs, which were good enough, just aren't good enough anymore. So they need something new. People are looking at customer at companies like Vicor to bring some of the commercial technology into play um, to kind of meet these needs. And at the same time, still have some level of radiation tolerance, which I haven't mentioned yet, but that's still, that's still a thing. Everybody wants to use commercial components, but there's still, uh, there's still a radiation uh, to worry about. So you need, to, you need to balance it. You need to get enough radiation tolerance um, to, to, to go along with the, um, the technological capability and the low cost and, uh, and that's, that's really the major sort of things that are, that are uh, required in the power system. Yeah, it's really challenging. They all want the low cost uh, commercial parts, but they still have to meet the space requirements. Exactly. So there's always a little bit of a trade off there. There is, and, and they're all making that trade off in different ways. There's not a set way to do this. Everybody, everybody's sort of trying to figure out what the best way, what's, what's good enough from radiation, uh, from radiation standpoint to allow them to get the, um, the components that they need to, to, to get the performance they need. So you mentioned artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, how will AI play into this market in the future? So it's just going to continue to drive it. So you have a, you know, have a satellite up, up in orbit. There's no human there to do anything. So the more that these satellites can, uh, can do the machine learning element of AI and help them with things like positioning, 
deorbiting, managing the communications, the better it will, the better the satellites will perform over time. So these things are going to continue to grow. So then you have a, a, another element where you have um, something like one percent of the information that's created by these satellites and are collected or, or driven gets actually transmitted back to Earth. There's only capacity for one percent. So for from an AI perspective, if you can sort of parse out the more useful 1%, it gets, it, it's very important. So you're going to see a lot more AI, um, you know, sorting through the pictures to make sure the right ones are sent back, making sure the right information is sent back in the right, uh, the right, uh, in the right fashion. So, so that's going to be a big driver as well. Great. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for your insights. We really appreciate it. I know Vicor is doing a lot of innovation, opening a new center for uh, manufacturing these modules, and you can find out more at vicorpower.com. We thank everybody for watching and join us next time on Frequency Matters. Thank you.